hand, yeah. it, it's it's using your eyes to to. Yeah, that immediately like as, your soon, eyeballs, as yeah. soon as you sit down, so it uses eye tracking then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Discovers your eyes. The wow. algorithm discovers your pupils, then triangulates right here. Knows how far your your face is from the display. <laughs> Hey, it's Virulink here, and today I'm going to show you something that's going to blow your mind. I recently got to meet with a company called Dimenko, and I think they're going to change the way you think of VR and holograms. Their tech allows you to get a three-dimensional experience with no wearables required. They do this by using simulated reality technology or SR technology. SR uses eye sensing or eye tracking to simulate a 3D effect. So while watching this video, you might not be able to see the effect that it's supposed to have because we are using a camera to take this and it has to be tracking your eyes. The desired effect is kind of like a 3D or a hologram effect where it looks like you can reach out and touch it. Now everything I'm showing you here is from the website and it can give you the best example of how it looks. And remember everything that I'm showing you right now is not exaggerated. It looks basically just like this. In my opinion it adds so much depth and opportunity to do different things with regular monitors that you can add on a laptop or a computer monitor. And it also adds a factor of interactivity. This is going to change the way we interact with every single piece of media. But to better explain, I'm gonna let Greg take it away. Each pixel is um, registered to a specific point on the lens and it sends out as a separate ray of light actually to each eye. So your right eye is getting one image and your left eye is getting another image. Hence, stereo, hence two, two images. So if you were to... Could you put any type of movie or game on here and it automatically does this? Or would it Not automatically, built? no. You need you need a stereo signal, okay. okay, or you need to make it into a stereo signal. So if you've got any kind of CGI, you've generated uh, anything, uh, your program will be able to create a second eye. Okay. Okay. It takes it takes the, the image and says, okay, you are the left eye, we're gonna create a another another view, another perspective. Okay, and that can be done in Maya, that can be done in Blender, that can be done in Cinema 4D. Uh, if, you've got, if you have an image of, uh, that's on the camera, yeah. you can still do that. You can post convert it to 3D. Next up, I'm going to show you some interactive use cases. This is the Z-Space Inspire. It's a laptop made for educational purposes in 3D, made for children in school from K through 12. And just note, everything you see here is going to come with the Z-Space. With this pen, I was able to go through different interactive demos. Note that each demo is fully 3D. With the first demo, I got to look at a 3D model of a heart. I know you all can't tell through the camera, but I got to pull the heart out of the screen and look at it from every single angle I wanted to. The best way I could describe it is just looking at a hologram. Well, a hologram that you can actually interact with. I could definitely see the future of this technology, just imagine wearing a glove that you can use to interact with this screen. I think the VR wearable technology that's happening right now would work perfect for this device. Now, before we move on to the next demo, I'm gonna actually show you how the pencil works. So as you can see, there is actually a sensing module at the side of this laptop. I didn't really get to ask how the module actually works, but they did tell me that the pen is sending a beam or a signal out. So I'm guessing that the beam is sending data to a PC and to the module, and it's putting that information through an algorithm. Now onto the next section of this demo. On this section of the demo, I was able to take apart a mechanical hand. I think this part of the demo is able to showcase how it utilizes depth because I was able to break down the mechanical hand piece by piece. And when doing this, I have to go through many different layers. Now let's move on to the last section of this demo. This section is going to be a bit simpler than the first section. In this section, I'm able to play 3D chess, literal 3D chess. With this laptop, I didn't have to use a special pen or anything like that. All I had to do was use the tap pad on the PC. So if you're thinking about getting a computer like this with this type of technology, you don't have to worry about getting an extra pen or anything like that. You can still just use the 3D technology on the laptop itself. What's crazy to me is that all of these look like regular laptops, but with a few extra cameras. I could definitely see in the future pretty much every single laptop having this. Because at the end of the day, why not? Now from here on out, almost everything I'm showing you, you can buy right now. And most of these were released during CES 2023. First up, the Asus StudioBook 3D. 
I would say this laptop would be perfect for editing and gaming, but we're going to talk about gaming later on in the video. It's running an RTX 4070, so it's at the top of the line when it comes to graphics. Imagine an amazing gaming PC, and then give that PC the power to make amazing holograms. And you have this. Over here, we have the Spatial Labs view. This is a separate monitor you can hook up to any laptop or computer. So if you want to edit a 3D project in real time, you can see it on here. In the demo, they showed me they were running a 3D project on Blender. And when they edited it or paused it on the laptop, it also showed on the display. And I was still able to see everything in 3D. If you already have a gaming laptop or a gaming computer, I would definitely recommend you getting this. This display is only a little bit over $1,000. This display would be a big upgrade to your setup. This next display is a BenQ proof of concept. And just like everything else I showed you, it was amazing. It really showcased how this technology can turn almost anything into something interactive. While watching this scene of Avatar, everything seemed to just be jumping out at me and it was just really cool to experience. I felt like I was kind of in the movie. In one point in the demo, I reached out to put one of the flower things in my hand like it was really there. And now finally, what all the gamers have been waiting for. Now follow me as I move to the gaming section of the demo. And we're here. It was literally just across the hall, so it really wasn't too far. Take a look at the Domenko SR Pro. For this demo, I got to play Hellblade. And in my opinion, I think this game was perfect for this demo because this display can already make things look 3D using SR technology. They also added 3D sound, which is perfect for when you're playing Hellblade. If you haven't played Hellblade already, during the game, you're going to be hearing sounds from different locations, actually whispers from different locations. So when you mix that with surround sound, it really does feel like it's coming from everywhere. Not to mention the amount of detail that's captured when you put this game into a 3D world. A lot of details in this game really starts to pop out to you, things you haven't noticed before. It almost feels like a regular display is just completely flat. It's really hard to get used to going back to a regular display now because you're just so used to everything just kind of popping out at you and just being a bit more realistic and a bit more textured. When it comes to running this display, you do have to have a 2080 Ti or higher when it comes to graphics cards. And for your CPU, you need at least an Intel i7 10th gen. Next, I got to try out the Predator Helios 300 Spatial Labs Edition. With this laptop, my girlfriend Brianna and I both got to try this out. I believe we were playing Tomb Raider and it was so much fun. This is how action games are meant to be played. And I don't think that review just goes for shooters because I also got to play Final Fantasy. Now honestly, I have never played Final Fantasy before, that's just not my type of game, but it was so cool playing it on this laptop. For some reason, out of all the games, I think this one popped the most. Everything in that gaming world just really stood out and felt immersive and it just popped out of the screen. I don't know what is with this game, but when I was playing Final Fantasy, it looked amazing. And now we're finally at the last demo. This demo is all about communication. And I feel like this is something everyone can use this for, especially since going through COVID. In this demo, we're able to do a live video call with this technology. And I have to say, I could definitely imagine doing this in my everyday life. As of right now, the technology is not perfect, but I can see where it's going. Since this was a video call, it had to digitally recreate everything live. It looked like there were a few artifacts popping up everywhere. To me, it kind of reminds me of taking the background out of the picture where someone's in the foreground and you kind of don't do it right so there's little things around the edges of the person but at the same time you do get quite a bit of detail from this and since the person will be popping out of your screen you get a sense of them actually being there so i think this is a software problem not really so much of a hardware problem once the software gets better, I could see this being amazing. But do not fret because they have another way of doing this. Instead of digitally recreating this live, they're actually able to use two set of cameras. They have one set of cameras that does the eye tracking and then the other set to make the two images. And then they use the data from both sets of cameras to make the 3D image. And honestly, I think I like this method better. There was no artifacts and it didn't look like I was just cut out and placed back in the shot. And in this method, it seemed like everything was popping out, even the billboard behind me. 
I think this shows a lot of ingenuity on Domenko's part. They found a way to do the same thing two different ways. And it looks like they're going to be doing development on both before they figure out which one works best. Or who knows, they may combine the two methods together. Now everyone, we have reached the end of this video. But before I go, I do want to give a big shout out to Domenko. I do want to say thank you for giving me the chance to look at this amazing tech. And I want to give out some special thanks to Jessica for responding back to my emails. And a big thanks for Joshim and Greg for facilitating this demo. If you liked this video and want to support the channel, please like and subscribe. It would really help the channel out. If you have any questions, feel free to put it in the comments below and message me on Twitter or TikTok. As always, have a wonderful day or night. Peace out.